Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Level Test Management Certification. We are in Chapter 1 talking about managing the test activities and continuing ahead with 1.3 that is risk-based testing. And today we shall be looking at the next sub-segment sub that is 1.3.3 Quality Risk Assessment and we shall be actually talking about the next major phase of the risk-based testing that is what is risk assessment. Well, a quick recall from the foundation level discussions, the risk assessment is the phase where identified risks are assessed for determining their level of risk and the level of risk is determined by two major factors that is likelihood and impact, where likelihood represents the frequency or probability of that event to happen, that is a risk, and impact certainly represents the harm. As a part of risk assessment itself, we deep dive to measure all these values and then put up together to represent the risk level or level of risk. And indeed, as a part of the risk assessment itself, we look forward to determine the response to the risk. Like, will we be mitigating it or transferring it or we will accept the risk or as a part of the acceptance, will we define any kind of contingency plans for it? So the response to risk will also be given right here. And then in the next phase, that is risk mitigation, we only act if we have defined the response to the risk as mitigation. In, in all other cases like transfer, someone else will take care of it. Acceptance, we don't do anything. And contingencies, we prepare for it. So the implementation happens as a part of risk mitigation, whereas assessment determines what to do about that identified risk after determining the level of risk. So in this particular tutorial, we'll be slightly deep diving into what is likelihood and impact and what are those factors which influence it. So let's get started. The very first part we are talking about is once risk has been identified, they can be assessed. Quality risk assessment includes the categorization of risk by type, like either product risk or project risk, and by quality risk impacted, that is the quality characteristics. Determining the risk level typically involves assessing for each risk item the likelihood of occurrence and the risk impact upon occurrence. When it comes to the factors influencing the risk likelihood for the quality risk, let me just quickly remind you once again that quality risk is, synonym, is, is the synonym to product risk. So product risk can also be called as quality risk, whereas project risk can also be called as planning risk. Okay, so they are just the same. So when we use the word quality risk, we are talking about the product risk. So the factors which influence the <clears throat> likelihood for the product or quality risk include complexity of the technology, tool or system architecture, maturity of the organization, personal issues with the skills, with skills, uh, availability, motivation or autonomous working, including knowledge of the SDLC in use. All these factors are very self-explanatory. We understand that why something would happen and why it would happen uh, quite frequently or maybe what are the chances of a risk to happen in a particular product. So of course the complexity, the people working on it, their expertise, their knowledge about doing their job or even if you talk about things like uh, you know how complex the system is all about, they all contribute to the same thing that what is the chances of this risk to happen, right? What kind of team is working on that? So let's continue with the discussion. So of course, we will have conflict within the team, which is again, uh, another contributor, contractual problem with suppliers, geographically distributed team, which will lack the collaboration and may not have proper communication, which may result into chances of a risk weak managerial or technical leadership. In fact, the managers are considered as one of the factor which influence the likelihood of a risk because we may not be consistently monitoring, we may not be applying the skills of managers, we may not be effectively doing the plan, determining the right action item. So, you know, even managers get included as a factor there. Also to add here, of course, uh, the time, resource, budget and management pressure, lack of early quality and assurance activities, high change rates of the test basis, product, or people as well. So all these factors are so straightforward. If you just correlate that how this otherwise would result into chances of having a risk into the system, it would make a lot of sense. Like people being frequently changing the projects. Like you fire people, then you've got new people, then again they leave the project, again you got new people. The chances of the risk coming into actuality is high. Right? So every single factor here makes a lot of sense. So we just have to understand as a manager that these are those factors which we have to work upon. 
and we have to reduce them as much as possible in our project to reduce the likelihood of a particular risk. Similarly, if we talk about, on the other hand, the impact of it, indeed the impact is the harm from that particular risk when it becomes an actuality and here the factors contributed as frequency of use of the affected feature, criticality of the affected feature, criticality of the affected business goal, damage to the reputation, loss of business income, potential financial, ecological or social losses, or sometimes even liabilities, uh, civil or criminal legal sanction, interfacing and interaction, integration issues, lack of reasonable workaround, safety needs, etc. All these factors would just convey us one thing that this would be an outcome if the risk occurs in reality. It would be the impact of the risk on the system, on the business, on the people, or on the product itself. And that is where we try to value these two factors while doing the assessment, that what is the chances of this risk to happen? And if it happens, what would be the impact of it? And the more it is high, we look forward to dedicate the level of risk as high. The less it is, the less the impact and likelihood would be. And that's where we define the proportionate amount of testing to do the required activities to make sure that we deal with them before it becomes real, okay? So that's where a manager combines the risk, likelihood, and impact to determine the risk level. Anyways, further to add here, of course, uh, the next thing we have is if risk analysis is based upon extensive and statistical valid risk data, a quantitative assessment is appropriate. For example, risk likelihood can be expressed as a percentage and risk impact as an amount. In such a case, the risk level can be calculated as the product of these two factors. So yes, we can measure these into a very factorial and very calculative thing. We can multiply these two numbers as a product and then get the overall risk level. Whereas the other option here, typically, though risk likelihood and impact can only be ascertained qualitatively on ordinal scale, like very high, high, medium, low, or very low. So we do understand that we can represent it in a qualitative manner, or sometimes we can, we can even quantify it with respect to the amount and the other factors. So that's where we look forward to see how effective that would be. And organizations have their own way to decide that should we go quantitative or qualitative, okay? And both of these play equal contribution in the uh, mitigation of the risk. Whereas on the other hand, of course, uh, the risk likelihood and the risk impact values are then combined through a risk matrix to create an aggregated risk level. This aggregated risk level should be interpreted as a qualitative relative rating upon an ordinal scale. Unless the risk analysis is based upon extensive and statistical valid data, the risk analysis will be qualitative based on the stakeholder subjective perception or risk likelihood and risk impact. So indeed, uh, the alternative is also being shared here that if you think the uh, quantifying of the risk may not be possible in certain aspects or certain areas, then we may look forward to use it as a qualitative analysis, which would be the subjective assumptions of the stakeholders. If they think this is something critical to be dealt with, we'll give them the rating as high. If they think, now let's uh, deprioritize it, or this is something lower priority for us to deal with, we can certainly reduce the level of it. So put together, we have two different ways by which we can ascertain the overall level of risk, whether it can be quantitative and qualitative, and depends on how much data have you collected about the risk. So the data plays a vital role. The more the information you have, the more the you know uh, detailed uh, analysis which can be conducted, and we can be more certain about what the risk is all about and how to conquer it in at the right time. So put together, that's the story. What the test manager should be worried about when it comes to the quality risk assessments. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.